So Father Yahweh, for this day that you have made for yourself that we should worship you, we should remember that you are our creator, our all in all, our Alpha and Omega. Thank you Lord Holy Spirit for your faithfulness. That is and every day you nourish us with your bread of life, the word of God, even today. Daniel 12 verse 11 is what you gave us. I read, I read, I read. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book. End of quote. This is the word of God. Glory be to our holy name, Father Yahweh. Today, the Lord teaches us, the Lord gives us a prophecy, a prophecy of great trouble and deliverance. Great trouble and deliverance. This prop prophecy may apply to Cameroon, as we will see. Daniel, which means in Hebrew, God, is my judge Daniel God is my judge was a noble Jewish youth of Jerusalem he was taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and served the king and his successors with loyalty and ability until the time of the Persian conqueror Cyrus all the while remaining true to Yahweh, the God of Israel. And uh, uh, he probably served the last King Cyrus for three years before his death. He interpreted dreams and received apocalyptic visions. Yahshua recognized Daniel as a prophet of Yahweh. I quote, Matthew 24 verse 15 When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the Holy Spirit whoso readeth let them understand end of quote first leg of this presentation great tribulations and deliverance we interpret we're going to interpret the word that the holy spirit gave us today in the time spoken in daniel 11 verse 45 which is the last verse of the the prior the the, the preceding chapter the last verse 45 previous to the overthrow of the king during the tribulation which precedes his overthrow Michael Michael which we which is spoken of in Daniel 10 verse 13 comes to stand up in aid of Yahweh's people then the scripture talks of a time of trouble a time of trouble this is the tribulation spoken of in Matthew 25 verses 21 to 22 which which follows as it does in, in in the book of daniel the wars rumors of wars and uprising of sundry nations as we see as i said in matthew 24 verses 6 to 7. it should be observed that the mere presence of michael does not avert the times of trouble he helps yahweh's people during the time of their trouble on the mode in which the intensity of the tribulation is described we may compare it to jeremiah 30 verse 7 which says alas for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. 
bed, he shall be saved out of it. And of course. Then the scripture says, Shall Michael stand up? And of course. Who is Michael? He is presented here as an angel. Michael signifies, Michael means, Who is like God? My Mikael in, in Hebrew, Mikael, who is like God. And his name with the title accompanied in this in this in this uh, uh, scripture with the title of Great Prince, calling him the Great Prince, points out to divine savior. Then the scripture says, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and of God, which is manifest which manifestly points out the Messiah and cannot properly be understood of a created angel. This cannot be a created angel presenting him as the great prince. The angel had told David uh, Daniel, Daniel in Daniel 10 verse 21 what a friend Michael was to the church of Yahweh and he now informs him that he should interpose in a singular way and work out deliverance for her. If this have any reference at all to the respite from trouble and the, de the deliverance wrought out for the Jews after the death of Antiochus, the, the Greek, the Greek king Antiochus, yet that cannot be the primary intention of the, this prediction of this prophecy. It evidently relates to the incarnation of the son of Yahweh, which was to take place soon after the days of an Antiochus in order to the eternal salvation of God's people. As if the angel had said, this is as if the angel had said, as after the signal judgment of God upon Antiochus, that persecutor of his people, they shall have some deliverance from their calamities, so they will be a yet far greater salvation right out for them when Michael your prince shall appear for you. And the scripture says, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation and so forth. This is not only applicable to but evidently primarily intended of the calamities suffered by the Jews before and during the siege of Jerusalem by the Romans. Calamities brought upon them by, for, for their rejection and crucifixions of their own Messiah. Of this time of trouble, Christ speaks in singular language in Matthew 24 verse 21 when he says I quote then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to that time no no nor ever shall be end of quote of this the angel had spoken much in Daniel 9 verses 26 to 27 and it happened soon after the time in which Christ set up his gospel kingdom in the world. It may refer, however, also to the dreadful judgments which shall be executed on all anti-Christian powers to make way for the universal spread of the gospel and the final conversion and restoration of the Jews concerning which are full judgments we may see Revelation 16 verses 18 to 21 and Revelation 19 verses 17 to 21. 
The prediction may include, likewise, the judgments of the great and last days spoken of in Scripture. Christ stood for the children of our people in their stead as a sacrifice, bore the curse for them to bear it from them. He stands for them in pleading for them at the throne of grace and after the destruction of the Antichrist the Lord Yahshua shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and he shall appear for the complete redemption of all his people. When Yahweh works deliverance, when he works deliverance from persecution for them, it is as life from death. When his gospel is preached, Many who sleep in the dust, both Jews and Gentiles, shall be awakened by it out of the hydenism of Judaism. Then the scripture says, And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone found written in the book. And of course, by those found written in the book, or as it is expressed in Isaiah 4 verse 3, written among the living in Jerusalem, may be understood as, as, as four, five things. First, the pious, the pious Jews who should be preserved from the mischief and ruin designed design for them by Antiochus, but more especially, second, second, such as should believe in Christ when he appeared, embrace his gospel and become his true disciples who should escape both the temporal calamities coming on their countrymen and obtain spiritual and eternal salvation through him. It includes also third, third, those who should be converted in the latter days and restored to their own land. And lastly, fourth, fourth, but there is even a fifth, fourth, all that should be found written in the book of life at the day of final judgment. That is, all truly justified, regenerated and pious persons. And in the end, we may say fifth, the multitude that, that sleep in the dust shall awake. Many shall arise to life, and many shall arise to shame. The angel here notes two things. First, that the church will be in great affliction and trouble at Christ's coming. And next, that Yahweh will send his angel to deliver it home. He here calls Michael, meaning Christ, who is proclaimed by the preaching of the gospel. The next section of this presentation, predictions, predictions of the abomination of desolation, abomination of desolation, about the notion of a time of trouble. A time of trouble that we started talking about. In Daniel 11 verses 31 to 45, his prophecy is very difficult and commentators differ much respecting it. From Greek ruler Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes, Epiphanes, the account seems to pass to the Antichrist. Reference seems to be made to the Roman Empire, the fourth monarchy in its pagan, earthly, Christian and papal, papal states. The end of Yahweh's anger against his people approaches, as well as the end of his patience towards his enemies. The Romans reigned quietly throughout all countries and from sea to sea and in Judea 
back at length because of their cruelty, Yahweh destroyed them. If we would escape the ruin of the inf infidel, the idolater, the superstitious and the cruel persecutor, as well as that of the profane, let us make the oracles of Yahweh our standard of truth and of jury, the foundation of our hope and the light of our path through this dark world to the glorious inheritance above. In the last verse, in the last verse of the prior chapter, verse 44, uh, uh, Daniel 11 verse 45, very 45, King Antiochus is represented as halting while in palatial tent. While a, pal a palatial tent is being erected for him between the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Sea and I quote, the glorious holy mountain generally explained to be Mount Zion in Jerusalem. This he threatens as once did the Assyrian in Isaiah 10 verses 32 to 34, but without success. For he shall come to his end at this point. The royal temporary residence in this expedition and previous to close the end of the whole matter that is the death of our entire of Antiochus would be in the mountain here referred to Mount Zion. It is to be remarked that the end of this king is placed in the same locality which is elsewhere predicted by the prophets as the sign of the overthrow of the entire cross. I read, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the Holy Spirit, whoso readeth, let him understand. This is rephrasing Christ. I already read it above. And this is also repeated in Ezekiel 39 verse 4, also Joel uh, 2 verse, verse 2 and 12, Zechariah, uh, uh, Zechariah 14 verse 2. The abomination of desolation or desolating sacrilege is a term found in the book of Daniel which means literally an abomination that desolates or an abomination that appeals. Some commentators have seen it an abomination of desolation. King Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes erecting in 168 before Christ the statue of Zeus, the, the god, the Greek god Zeus inside the temple of Jerusalem and sacrificing a pig on its altar of incense. Yet the actions of entire Joseph Epiphanes as fulfillment of Daniel 9 verse 27, which says, I quote, on the wing of abominations shall come one who makes desolate, end of quote, which have the time frame in verses 24 to 27 in Daniel 9 begins with the decree of Cyrus that sent the Jews back to their land after the exile, as we see it in Israel 1. What make it, this make it impossible that Daniel's prophecy refers to Antiochus Epiphanes. The year 186 before Christ was far too early to fit the prophecy, but the year 70 of our era was not. It seems incontroversible that Titus action, Roman, Roman, Roman Emperor Titus actions were the specific fulfillment of Yahshua's warning in Mark 13 verse 14 about the, I quote, abomination of desolation standing 
where he ought not to be. End of quote. After all, the parallel verse in Matthew 24, verse 15, which I read, says that the abomination will stand in, I quote, the holy place, end of quote, a clear reference to the temple of Jerusalem. The last section, prophecy of great trouble before deliverance. The troubles that came upon the land under the persecutions of Antiochus probably surpassed any that the Hebrew nation ever experienced. Nor could it be shown that for that, for the same period of time, they were surpassed among any other people. Yet, Yahshua Christ had, has employed this language as adapted to express the intensity of the trials which would be brought upon the Jews by the Romans. I quote him, For then shall the great tribulation, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, nor heaven shall be. End of quote. Quoting Matthew 24 verse 21. About 36 years after Yahshua's death, resurrection, and ascension, in year 70 of our era, the Romans destroyed the temple and, and the town of Jerusalem, as well as all Judah towns, killing about 1,100,000 people, mainly Jews. This was the great tribulation, an abomination of desolation. When these troubles are at their height, the scripture says, the Christian of the day says, shall be delivered those whose name are enrolled, that is, enrolled as among the living. The idea is that a register was made of the names of those who were to be speared, to wit, by Yahweh or by the angel, and that all whose names were not recorded would be preserved, would not be preserved. Those not so enrolled would be cut off under the persecutions of the Romans. The language here does not refer to the book of eternal life or salvation, nor is it implied that they who would thus be preserved would necessarily be saved, but to their preservation from death and persecution, as if their names were recorded in, in a book or were enrolled. We frequently, we frequently meet with similar ideas in the scriptures. The idea is, of course, poetical, but it expresses with sufficient clearness the thought that there was a divine purpose in regard to them and that there was a definite number whom Yahweh designed to keep alive and that these would be delivered from those troubles while many others would be cut off. How does this prophecy apply to our to your life? Well, if you live in a country where there is an indication that an abomination of desolation may occur while inhabitants are also in bondage, this prophecy may apply to your country. As it stands now, Cameroon shows many clouds auguring an impending abomination of desolation. Since December 2016 until this day, the dictatorial Francophone regime has been terrorizing the Anglophone minori minority in order to silence their claims for federation as a form of state, which the people which the people turn into claims of total separation because of the state terror they suffer. 
but world super superpowers have started expressing compassion for the terrorized anglophone minority. Yahweh talks to the Cameroonian people today. He says, great trouble is coming ahead. An abomination of desolation for the wicked oppressor is on the way. He says, when the trouble will reach its climax, 